I guess when you look at uh, the global picture and you look at uh, the hot spots where there is trouble, yeah. you've got to look at North America, you've got to look at Europe, you wouldn't look at Africa. But from what you see from your survey, where are those dots? Well, I think that um, the, the, it's a cloud and we can see the cloud in, in the global financial markets. We've just come out of a global um, financial crisis and recession, and what we're seeing now is that the developed, market, developed countries of Europe and North America are struggling, struggling to get back on path. Um, overburdened with debt, um, people are, um, the consumers and, and businesses are, are, are pulling back on spending and building up their, um, their, their, their savings, basically, to, to, to replenish what they've lost. Right. And that has an impact on the world, on the world economy. But it's, it's a story of two halves, because what we've seen is that um, although the, the developed markets are, are consumers, yeah. um, we, we've seen that the drivers of, of building manufacturing have been the emerging markets of, of China and India. And what we've seen is, as the um, as the demand has dropped away from the developing markets, all of a sudden that there's a, 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 um, a development, a growth of um, of the Chinese middle class, the Indian markets, and domestic demand is driving that. Right. So the growth yeah. is 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 there. So when when you look at when you look at the world, it's a cloud, but there's a silver lining, yeah. and the benefits of that are um, are in Africa because. Africa is the fuel that drives the, the growth in those, um, those economic giants. Absolutely. We're going to come and talk about Africa specifically just a little bit after this. I just want to get a sense from you. Political versus economic risk. Where is the bigger risk here this time round? I think geopolitics is always there. And yeah. for businesses looking to, to invest, there's always an issue of geopolitics. And it's a key one when we talk about sure. Africa. But beyond Africa, there's a shift. There's a shift in the power base in the global economy, mm -hmm. and it's a shift from developed nations like the US right. and Europe to emerging markets like China, India, and Brazil. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing that quite fundamentally, and it's stretching right across, whereas it's not just about the economy, it's now about um, uh, global governance, it's about um, the, the environment, and China's taking a lead in a number of these issues. Mm -hmm. So yes, political risk is 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 there yeah. and it's specifically there for companies that are used to dealing with western type um, economies and western type markets yeah. and the shift now to understanding where the east is driving yeah but when you look at uh, europe particularly given the dead burden and all the issues that we now have with the greeks protesting and all those kind of things who would have thought that if you lent to a european government there would be an economic risk in terms of a return on your investment from those particular countries we're talking now about a haircut for, 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 for investors invested in Greek bonds. Yes, exactly. Absolutely. I mean, I mean what we've seen is um, we've seen that political risk is prevalent in Europe. Sure. Um, the, the austerity measures that the governments are forced to put in place. I mean, Europe's going through a political crisis that it hasn't seen in 20 years since the, for, the, the, the breakdown of the Berlin Wall. Uh, not, sorry, not the Berlin Wall, the um, Russia's, um, Russia's shift yeah. away. So we've seen the risk in it, and we see it manifest itself in, in a potentially a shock to the whole world system mm. in the breakdown of the Eurozone. Now, there's the, the, the European governments are battling to stop that happening. Um, and we in controllers don't foresee that that actually happening. They're going to fight very hard to ensure it doesn't. Mm. But it's still a risk, and it's a huge risk for investors into the European markets. And the, the offshoot of that is not just political risks and investments, but operational risks. Right. We've seen Athens go up in flames, mm. and we saw um, a lot of those protests last year. They will continue, you know, and a lot of it's driven by disenchantment by consumers. I mean, the, the impact is felt by the youth. Um, young people are underemployed and unemployed and those young people are finding a voice yeah. saying that they, they don't they don't believe that the governments are doing the right thing yeah. and of course they're looking after themselves. Yeah. One of the more profound statements that I've come across suggested that what you're seeing today is yesterday's creditors are today's lenders and vice versa and I think that's particularly true when you look at the picture in Europe but let's talk about Africa because Africa for many people is one bright spot. When you look at the risks as uh, those that are confronting the African continent, what do you see? It is. I mean, there are there are huge opportunities in Africa. I mean, um, what do we have? We have um, we have a, uh, a global commodities super cycle, uh, and and Africa is driven by natural resources. Mm. Um, we see that um, that that. Um, 
part of part of that has mean market liberalization across Africa yeah. we see um, political risk is still there but we see that um, the old enemies of, of, of war and, and and civil strife and code d'etat are, are, are are moving away. We've got um, we've got low. Um, unlike the, the the developed markets, we've got low um, debt to GDP ratios. Yeah. So um, that's great because of the debt write off. Sure. We've got a, a an emerging middle class. So w when when you're a business based here in South Africa or worldwide, and you look at the African market, yeah. you see a lot of opportunities. But on the flip side of opportunities, there are risks. It's like of this, it's like the Chinese symbol for yeah. for risk, danger. An opportunity. Okay. <laughs> so um, you know, w w the World Bank said that 93 billion dollars needs to be invested every year in infrastructure on the continent. Mm -hmm. Now that's a great thing for companies looking at uh, infrastructure um, en engineering and and, uh, and infrastructure companies. But the flip side of that is that infrastructure projects require a lot of government intervention and government support yeah. and that means political risk is elevated right to the top of those companies mm -hmm. problems mm -hmm. it's no it's, it, it's it, there's, it's no surprise that um, we're hitting the 400 millionth subscriber for um, for telecoms for yeah. mobile phones on the continent why is that because governments don't need to do very much for telecoms companies other than issue licenses mm. and take funds from that mm. and and it's the one of the fastest growing consumer products on the continent absolutely david unfortunately we've run out of time but i just wanted quick tech from you so how does business get it right to ensure that in this environment where you've got that opportunity and uh risk juxtaposed they make the most of it uh, in africa specifically 53 different countries you really need to understand the country that you're dealing with and the political risk associated with that country and they're all sure. very different that's one um, that the the second the second piece you need to do is you need to make sure that you have plans in place to deal with how the the, the environment's changing the risks involved in that and also the the major risks that can manifest itself that the black swan events we yeah. saw that in libya last year with civil war yeah. Yeah. so there there are two areas so know the know where you're dealing with know which country you are you are and really know how to how to make the most out of working 